Static friction is the friction force on an object which is stationary. Friction force on an object which is at rest. And the goal of static friction force is to prevent the object from moving. And the uh, static friction force is written like this. And the static friction force has a range of values that it can be. It can be uh, down to zero. That's the minimum it can be. The maximum is, it can be is mu s n. That's the Greek letter mu, which is the Greek letter for m. And this is uh, the subscript s meaning it's static. So this thing is known as the coefficient of static friction. And the coefficient of static friction depends on the two materials that are in contact, the, the properties of the two materials that are in contact. So like, that means, let's say you have a steel block, steel block on a wood surface. Depends on the nature of the steel block and the wood surface. If it's steel on steel, then probably the static friction is a little less. St st uh, steel on glass is a little bit less. Steel on ice is a little bit less. So it depends on the properties. Now your book should have a table. You can take a look at it. The table is going to give you a certain table of static friction and co uh, coefficients. It gives you rubber on uh, concrete, steel on steel, aluminum on steel, glass on glass, uh, so on. Now what is the typical kinds of numbers here? 1.0, What's the largest one you see there? 1.0. That means uh, mu s doesn't have to be a fraction. It could be, it could be a number that's even greater than one, if you have a real rough surface, you know. So rubber on concrete is 1.0, and the smallest is what? 0 0.01. What is that? What's the material? Synovial joints in humans. 0.01. Synovial joints in humans. Ice on ice is 0.1. Ice on ice is probably as, you know, as you could go pretty low there. Te uh, Teflon on Teflon, it says, is 0 0.04. 0 0.04. So these are the low end of the spectrum. So pretty much, as far as that table is concerned, the mu s can be about le as little as 0.01 and may be as pretty much as large as uh, one, maybe it could even be greater than one, you know, as I said. So there's nothing that prevents it from being greater than one. One to one and a half, let's say. Okay. Another interesting thing is that mu s does also does not depend on the surface area. Okay, it does not depend. Does not depend on surface area. It only depends on the material. In other words, if I'm trying to move this folder while it's like that, and I'm trying to move it while it's facing up, it should be the same difficulty. 
I shouldn't be, it shouldn't be easier for me to move it when only a portion of it is uh, lying on the surface, on the table. If, I, if the full surface area is lying, same mu s, same mu s, okay? Now, of course, it's easier to tip it over when the surface area is less, but that's a different question, okay? But if I want to move it, the surface area doesn't change the difficulty of moving it, okay? And same thing if it's lying down. Okay. Uh